Okay, well, we, I think we're all seated and can commence the program. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Australian Serbian, Serbian Commerce Chamber networking event. Let's talk business this evening. We're absolutely thrilled to be in your company tonight. Uh, the Australian Serbian Commerce Chamber is moving into a period of greater relevancy, which will be key to it becoming an integral part of business communities in both Australia and Serbia. And some of our speakers from this evening will showcase some fantastic examples um, of exactly how they managed to do that in a variety of ways. Our agenda uh, for the remaining program will be opening remarks by our Vice President, Mr. Savan Shipka, followed by a key address by Chris Hayes, Federal Member for Fowler, Chief of Possession and Whip. Uh, we'll then have a key address by His Excellency Mr. Mirolyu Petrovic, the Ambassador of the Republic of Serbia. Um, Mr. Louis Sankomenac will then present a case study uh, from the company 3D Fire Design. Uh, we'll then have a presentation, a video presentation by a company called uh, Solar Energy Focus on their new patent technology, uh, Solar Concentrator. So they're a Serbian based company and again another example of how we can connect businesses in both Australia and Serbia and they will be, they, we're honoured to have them have sent us a video tonight that we'll be able to present. Um, we will then have our final case study for the evening uh, by Professor Miroslav Filipovic from Western Sydney University. Uh, I will now like to introduce our Vice President, Stefan Shipka, for his opening remarks. Uh, thank you, Tatiana. really appreciate all your work tonight in, in preparing this wonderful venue for us. Um, I think special thanks has to go, obviously, to Mr. Chris Hayes, Federal Member for Fowler. Um, there's, you know, without a doubt, um, Chris's work in Parliament in 2012 with the preferential trade agreement was probably partly an, an inspiration for this chamber being developed. So Chris, it's actually a great honour to have you here today and thank you for your inspiration to, you know, push our Serbian Australians here to our Australian Serbians to, to, to create the chamber. I'd also like to give special thanks to His Excellency Ambassador Mirilio Petrovic, who is probably our strongest supporter and has been behind us 100%. He's, he's really done huge things for our chamber and, and our initial, our initial um, chamber um, meeting was actually in Canberra um, with, with the ambassador hosting us. So I think, uh, I think we should all just um, give a special round of applause to Mr. Chris Hayes and our ambassador Petrovic. I'd also like to thank all the members in attendance today um, and, and obviously our sponsors who, who have helped um, put together this night. So thank you to our sponsors for the hospitality. They are here, Fusion Professionals, um, uh, Rade Branesh, which unfortunately couldn't come tonight. He got stuck uh, in all places, Noosa. So I don't know if that was a tactical move or not, but he, he was adamant that he really wanted to be here and I'm, I'm sure he did. Um, sales tra Trekker, um, also Dali Borivkovic, a great sponsor of ours, and Ordemus Risk, um, Alexander Kovacic, who's also uh, a very strong supporter of our chamber and he's, he's constantly uh, behind us. Many people ask about the Australian Serbian Commerce Chamber and what, what we're all about. And, you know, I guess people have a misconception thinking that we're, a, you know, networking for local businesses. And we're actually not about that. We are non for profit. We're, we're uh, incorporated in Melbourne, um, but we have key represent representatives across Australia and Serbia, have a very strong team in Melbourne. And, and to be honest, they've been probably holding, holding up um, the chamber because their activities have been tremendous. So, uh, Sasha Goran Adela. Marco, Boris and Simon, uh, to name a few in Melbourne, have done great things. Um, Brisbane and Perth and also Canberra, we have membership there. And not sure if, if you know this, but we ha actually have a small team in Serbia led by Igor Savic, who's a tremendous individual. And, you know, he's flying the flag for our chamber in Belgrade. Our vision, as you can see on the board, um, is to realise the full potential of trade ties between, between Serbia and Australia mm. and to create the relevant networking opportunities within our member base and beyond, empowering a new era of economic growth, integration and broader social prosperity. Um, I know, I believe that um, 
um, Mr. Chris Hayes and, and Ambassador Petrovic will probably say a few words about the growth in trade between our two countries. So I won't steal their thunder. Uh, but what I'd like to, to let you all know about is the key highlights and achievements to date. Um, first and foremost, actually it was Sydney that held the first networking event and that was at our um, Unlimited Mind Tesla exhibition at University of New South Wales. That was an amazing event. Uh, we actually had um, something like seven delegates come from AmCham um, and our, I must say that um, global IT and again fusion professionals were very, very important to ensure that that great exhibition actually came to Sydney. So, you know, that was one, one time where, where members of the chamber really probably saved the day. Um, we've also been closely aligned with the Glutch project, which is an archaeological um, project in Srebska Mitrovica. Um, basically, um, from the Australian side, it's Sydney University, uh, Professor Richard Miles and Sydney Grammar School, um, um, Alan... Got his name. Yeah. Dern, my good friend Alan Dern. So they would be here tonight. They would be here tonight, but unfortunately, or fortunately for them, they're, they're actually digging um, in 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 uh, at the Glutch site at the moment. And what I read um, <clears throat> about 14 hours ago is that they think they may have come across the roof of uh, the Imperial Palace of Emperor Maximian. So I think they're they're getting very very excited about that uh, archaeological dig and, and we as a chamber have actually raised funds for the um, education program that Alan has been running with. Um, to our good friends in Melbourne who, who have been flying the flag, uh, last year in October they actually held a services trade event. Um, we've established a very strong partnership with the International Chamber House and again it was a showcasing of Australian business using Serbian skill set to, to develop, um, you know, trade between the countries and global IT. Mr. Boris Rosenthal was, um, you know, one of the leading speakers or his company, I should say, was one of the leading speakers there. Um, the, the, cha the chapter in Melbourne was also able to, to secure a, a stall or, a, or an area of the trade fair in Melbourne so that Anna Popovich could showcase her fashion design. So that was a big coup for us. Uh, we're also an affiliated mem member of the um, European Australian Business Council, which is, which is very important to us. Um, we're working directly. We have a direct working relationship with um, Ambassador Petrovic, of course, and um, the, uh, his counterpart in Belgrade, Ambassador Ruth Stewart. So this is also important for us. We have strong links with Austrade, and, you know, we have established ties with with the Serbian um, Chamber of Commerce in Belgrade. There's, in our, I guess not our day to day, but some of the functions that come across us, I mean, obviously, you know, it's well documented, the lithium deposits um, in Serbia. And, you know, we all know that Rio Tinto is there looking into the, the um, uh, Jadarite um, um, deposits there and you know there's potential for those for that mining to commence in 2023 and that will be you know extremely high profile the reality is is lithium they believe that 10 percent of the world's lithium deposits are in Serbia and it's lithium that's powering um, sustainable energy and powering electric cars the batteries in electric cars which again synonymous we come back around to Tesla and and these type of companies but in recent times we get um, in recent times, we, we get uh, requests from Serbian companies asking for investment um, from, and they come to us first. So we've had um, agribusiness come to us talking about frozen food plants and, and possible investment there. Uh, you'll see in tonight's presentation a, a, a recent um, solar energy um, um, investment opportunity so we'll show that to you tonight first and foremost and I think about three or four days ago we had a Serbian company um, contact us about monitoring of, of fruit crops in particular apples so again you know there's there's interest from Serbia um, we mustn't forget that this chamber really legitimizes um, us as a, as, as a community um, supporting Australia and Serbia and and I'm sure the time will come when 
when um, a Serbian diplomat or, or, or politician comes to Australia and the reality is they're going to come to, to meet with us because, you know, we are potentially the, the, the uh, group that can, can help support, um, you know, economic growth between the two nations. Um, from, from, that, from that side, um, I'm, I know that there's a lot of things happening in Serbia as well. Last week, um, our chapter, um, Igor Savic and the team was involved with an SME um, doing business in Serbia workshop, which again was another highlight of the fact of how, how we are being involved. So uh, that's pretty much the opening remarks. Again, I hope that enlightens you all on what our chamber is about. Um, I think next I'd like to invite um, Mr. Chris Hayes to maybe um, say a few words to us. And we appreciate the fact that you've come, come all this way to, to chat to us tonight. Thank you. Thanks very much, Steve. Can I try this on you first? Drobla Vecha, Draghi Pretklatelli. If it didn't work, you can blame Alex. <laughs> My good friend, the ambassador, who I have a lot of contact with in Canberra, and by the way, who's known by every senator and member of parliament. He does an extremely good job in not only promoting uh, Serbian interests, but uh, promoting the uh, people to people uh, relationships between our two countries. Steve, thanks for inviting me to be here. And like most speeches, I, I should actually start by acknowledging the first peoples in this land and acknowledge their, their long history and uh, their very proud culture. But in doing it, can I remind everyone here uh, that unless you're an Aboriginal person, which I don't see any here, but uh, unless you're an Aboriginal person, we are all immigrants or, de or uh, descended from immigrants in this great nation of ours. It's our immigration that has made this country great. And uh, in my own electorate uh, uh, in the western um, suburbs of Sydney, I see the influence of the Serbian uh, population, their immigration patterns, uh, and what they've been able to achieve in, in Australia. And uh, we are now moving to the third generations of that. Uh, young people are doing extremely well. Uh, their take up at uh, tertiary level at our universities, their commitment to uh, public uh, uh, work within our communities and also what I get to do see quite regularly or at least since 2010 since I, I went to this electorate for my former seat uh, I've been going to the uh, Serbian Folkloric Festival I get to see how parents and grandparents promote the Serbian culture and traditions uh, through to their, their children and which is an absolute great thing as a matter of fact we've been able to help uh, uh, the Bonnie Riggs Sports Club with a, a couple of visas uh, to get uh, choreographers in uh, uh, to, uh, to assist that. So uh, look, that's a great thing to see out there. Young people actually wanting to maintain their culture and their traditions. By the way, that's what this country's all about. Look, um, I just wanted to say a few things about uh, Serbia. I did have the opportunity of going there in uh, 2013. And um, I think there's a lot different than what the Serbia that Steve just uh, described in the organisations. Uh, I know I was under a former government over there and uh, um, also, uh, they, um, they certainly were of the view when I was there that their, their whole future was dependent upon them gaining access to the European Union. Uh, and by the way, that was at ministerial level. And I kept thinking, oh, God, I don't want to come out and visit a lovely country like this and try and lecture people about uh, ec economic change, but this country was in need of significant uh, economic reform. Uh, how you do business and simply getting access to the, to the European Union was never ever going to deliver all that. So look, I think much has changed since then. Uh, I think uh, Serbia has probably matured in its outlook. Um, and, but, and what we have said uh, ever since then is you know, significant opportunities for Australian investors, particularly if they're pe prepared to go in partnership with Serbian companies. Not only do you get access to, to the markets within the Balkans, but uh, because uh, the free trade agreements that are existing with uh, Russia, you get access to a very large market share. Uh, and yeah, that's something that you know, not many other countries can offer that. So that's one of the things that we thought was uh, pretty interesting out there is if we could actually, actually encourage companies to actually think that way. As a matter of fact, one of the things that we did raise as an Australian delegation when we were there because, uh, uh, was the issue of... Um, um, 
political staff exchange. And this was not a matter of polluting one staff with another. This was, this was uh, uh, they were showing interest in how our political systems work. And what we offered is that we would, uh, we would consider uh, short-term internships of, of a month where people could actually go from one, you know, one country to the other, work out how things work at a, not only a political but an administrative level, and uh, either take things that work back or, or discount things that don't work. Um, but anyway, look, uh, that, nothing came of that, but I was, I was heartened to have some discussion early tonight. Uh, I know there is a proposition to be made now about uh, exchange of uh, uh, student exchange. Now, I think that would be an absolute great thing. Um, we have young people uh, who are so determined to maintain their, their history and tradition, be able to go over there for a period of time, participate not only in, in the language but in the culture. Um, but, you know, like most of us, you know, these kids want to know where they come from. And I think to be able to extend that, once these kids get to university, and go on to uh, industry, it's going to make it easier for them to engage with Serbia as, as a long-term trading partner for this country. This is doing the exact thing that occurs at the moment with either the, uh, the Asian markets or elsewhere. And I think we've just got to get smart about it. We have good access through a, um, a Serbian, Australian Serbian community, uh, one which is, has uh, long-term roots in this country. Uh, we have the benefit of a, a succession of uh, um, uh, diplomatic staff and his excellency is a good example of this, uh, determined to actually make a difference for the better between the two countries. I just think we should exploit the, these uh, situations to the point where we deliver not only for young people uh, the ability to uh, participate uh, in, the, in their history and their culture, but in the long term deliver for us uh, the ability of doing business on a more, uh, more palatable basis with a country such as Serbia. Look, um, in my electorate, uh, I, I do have a large Serbian population. Uh, I think um, it's, it's changed a little. I, I, I remember when uh, the Serbian uh, uh, Bonnie Rig White Eagles would play the Croatian club. You know, I've never seen so police in my life. You know, the, um, but you know, obviously they're very, very competitive clubs. Perhaps uh, I don't know what the flares are all about, but you know, give me rugby league any day. Um, but the thing is with it, you know, uh, I think we've, we've come a long way since that. And I see the, uh, in my community, uh, uh, the, the Serbs are, are so proud of their, their history and their tradition. In Liverpool and Fairfield, by the way, they should be proud, they built half of it. Uh, they were the builders, the, the, the concreters and everything else out there. We owe them, uh, the first generation that came here, a substantial uh, debt of gratitude. And as I say, for the young ones who are, uh, are continuing on uh, uh, through, their, through their access to tertiary education, uh, the amount of uh, Serbs that you see on the uh, medical registrars now, uh, whether you see, or my colleagues in, in the, the law fraternity, whether in the uh, law society or the bar council, the amount of Serbian names there, it's not by mistake. It's because the mums and dads that came out here uh, the first generations that came here, here worked very, very hard. There's no question about it. As I say, they were the builders. They did all that, that hard work. But what they brought with them was a, uh, an incredible commitment to make life better for their kids, and they did it through education. They did it uh, to ensure that their kids got the best education possible in this country, and they benefit from that education. So, uh, as I say, it's not by any by chance or anything like that, of why the Serbs have done so well in this country. And it all goes back to the first that, the ones that came here, um, making sure that education, public education in particular, wasn't seen as a form of compulsory child minding. They wanted their kids to benefit from it, and they have. So look, Steve, look, thanks for asking me to come along tonight. Uh, we do a heck of a lot of stuff with the ambassador in Canberra. Uh, I think you guys should be very proud of him. He's, he runs a very good, uh, uh, very good embassy, and uh, one which uh, you know, we all uh, are happy to participate in his nights. He put, puts on, puts on a great food, really do. <laughs> and the red wine's sensational, let me tell you. <laughs> but uh, look, um, if if there's anything that uh, I think we should be doing, in, that is promoting trade and uh, people, uh, people to people relationships, um, and I think uh, you're 
organisations do, it does that uh, in spades. I think that's what we need to do for the future because I, I just think there's, there's such a, an incredible opportunity for Australian strategy benefit in this. It's a part of the world we don't have uh, great access into, uh, uh, but using our, our Australian serving community, we can actually benefit from it. So look, um, thanks for what you do. We will uh, always work with you. Steve's a regular visitor to my office, by the way. I should declare that uh, up front. Um, but always such a passionate advocate for uh, Australian serving business. Thanks for inviting me to be here, and uh, um, thanks for the opportunity to present tonight. Thank you very much, Chris. Uh, I'd like to now introduce our next speaker, His Excellency Ambassador Mirlul Petrovic, to say a few words. Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much, Chris, for your kind works, uh, words, and thank you very much for your dedication to improve bilateral relations between Serbia and Australia and the results of your work uh, during the time, especially uh, during the 2011, 2012, 2013, and after your visit to Serbia, we can see today. Uh, because according to figures of uh, two ways uh, trade between two countries, uh, 2011 we finalized with 14 million Australian dollars on both ways, but uh, last year 65 million. And uh, my expectation till end of this year will be around 70 million dollars. Thank you for that and thank you for the dedication at that time to introduce new measures and new regulations regarding opportunities for trade between two, tra uh, two countries. Uh, when we speak about uh, trade relations, uh, uh, According to figures, uh, we can identify type of uh, products and uh, when we can uh, see this type of products. Majority of them uh, we can find in uh, so-called uh, community shops. But uh, my intention is uh, to identify opportunities to uh, uh, find uh, channels uh, for such type of products to big uh, through big channels, through big mega markets, through uh, big uh, specific uh, uh, trade channels for equipment, uh, technical equipment, for uh, services, etc. When I mention service, uh, services, uh, we have a significant race of amount of services among uh, between two countries, even around uh, 50 million. Uh, services uh, uh, from Serbia came uh, come here to Australia uh, and around 15 million from out, uh, millions from Australia to Serbia. Uh, one of the reasons uh, is uh, good opportunities for Australian companies which established uh, back offices or such type of uh, other activities in uh, Serbia. We have um, uh, around 20 Australian companies which already established uh, uh, business in Serbia and uh, according to some newest information so we are waiting for a couple of new bigger uh, companies which consider opportunities to establish business in Serbia. Uh, my task is not just to speak about good uh, elements uh, from time to time I try to identify problems and due to that uh, I would like to mention here the problem with plasma ke uh, kex uh, Bambi plasma, uh, which a uh, couple of months ago we had uh, one very bad example when some companies here from Australia tried to import uh, such type of products from Serbia but unsuccessfully due to the uh, fact that they tried to avoid some regulations and uh, they come uh, here with products on the uh, customs and uh, in, uh, inspections, etc., and uh, according to uh, uh, improper uh, elements in uh, this uh, uh, contingent of the products, all products had to be 
uh, sent back to Serbia. And my intention through uh, Chamber of Commerce, uh, Australian Serbian, uh, Serbian Chamber of Commerce, to uh, speak openly about the problems, to motivate our people to work according to regulations, to, to, to identify opportunities, but uh, according to real regulations in Serbian market and Australian market at the same time. As uh, Chris already mentioned, uh, Serbia can offer significant advantages uh, in compare with some other countries offering uh, free trade agreements with uh, Russia, Turkey, European Union, and also according to new ideas from um, Serbia, we, uh, our expectation uh, that we will form in coming months uh, free custom zones in our region, uh, first uh, uh, among the, between Serbia, North, Northern Macedonia and Albania, in the, and after that we, our expectation that part of uh, such project could be Bosnia and uh, Montenegro. Uh, it is not substitution for our intention to be European Union, but uh, it is a practical uh, step forward to coordinate some activities in our region and to uh, identify, uh, uh, to offer more opportunities for investors which uh, consider our region as good opportunity for investment. Uh, I know, uh, and uh, <laughs> before this uh, 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 starting of uh, this meeting, the question of education is also a very important aspect. Uh, my intention is to uh, try to identify opportuni opportunities for cooperation among the in institutions, among the schools, among the colleges, uh, among the universities. And if I can help, I am on your disposal. Uh, Till now I try to... Uh, uh, introduce opportunities for cooperation among the universities, but uh, I uh, have to say unsuccessfully <coughs> because maybe it's not enough interest for that, or maybe not enough enthusiasm for that, but uh, I hope uh, we can find proper uh, uh, way to uh, establish such type of cooperation in coming future. Uh, when uh, uh, 2016 we start to consider uh, the establishment of uh, any type of organization which could help uh, to business people how to establish co com uh, business uh, connections between two countries, uh, we try to uh, identify uh, the people which have uh, uh, enough enthusiasm to work on such way. Uh, thank you, uh, Stevan. Stevan is very dedicated man, uh, dedicated man for uh, such type of activities, and even uh, I try to uh, to help uh, uh, Stevan how to speed up the process of uh, uh, communication from time to time. And uh, as always, I'm on your dis disposal and to disposal on disposal for all, uh, all members of uh, uh, Chamber of Commerce to go ahead to uh, establish business, to recognize opportunities, and to uh, improve bilateral relations between Australia and Serbia. Uh, according to results uh, from economic sphere, uh, we can see uh, more uh, results in political sphere and some other aspects of institutional connection between two countries. Of course, uh, question of social security agreement could be one of next step in our institutional improvement uh, uh, of relations between two countries. Thank you so much. I, I wish you all the best, and I'm as I already mentioned on your disp disposal for any further uh, discussion and communication regarding your business and your interest and, uh, of course, interest of Serbia and Australia relations. Thank you.
Thank you, Ambassador Petrovic, and for your ongoing commitment to the Chamber as well. I would now like to invite Luis Lankomaneva to the stage, who will present a case study on 3D fire design. Uh, Luis. Yeah, so basically, this is just one of many examples how we can make things work in between Australia and Serbia. So I'll just tell my story. Uh, basically, I am originally from Zrenjanin, which is part of Serbia, Vojvodina. And basically, I finished my mechanical engineering degree in 1999. Um, worked for a couple of years in Serbia, then basically arrived in Australia in 2005 with my wife Tanya. Um, have two young kids now here, they are real Aussies now, and basically um, started the, from the very, very, be very beginning in 2005 when we came, I started from the really bottom, I, I was like a um, drafter in, in Triple M Group, which is probably one of the biggest companies here for, um, in building industry, um, especially in Sydney, but overall in general, and I started really from the like becoming, becoming first a drafter, then designer, and then ultimately design manager. And basically I saw the opportunities in the marketplace because um, first I had been doing that for, at that time, about seven years, and then I thought, okay, I, I can do it my, on my own. And basically I saw the opportunity there because um, it just, it just there is a lot of work here. So basically we started, my wife and I, we started our business in 2013, basically just two of us. And gradually we just start basically employing more and more people. Now, because there is so much work and in general I, I knew that there are a lot of good, good hardworking people with a lot of skills in, in Serbia, I basically thought let's try to basically, just let's try with the people from over there. And basically, yeah, it's, it's, it's going really well and, and basically we, first we started with the people that we know and then basically after that we, we basically gradually start um, involving more and more people. So for us, the biggest concern was really how to make sure that that's sustainable. So we need to train people to be good and then basically, because ultimately you have to have um, always some people that can train the others. And ultimately when we get to the point that we have a um, couple of people that, that really knows what they need to do design-wise, then we started our uh, basically just expanding. Um, and basically it's literally 24-7 business at the moment. So the way how it works is um, it's not a bit, it's not really easy because in general, um, but it's very, very, very good in any sort of aspect because in a way you are helping your own country. Also you are helping yourself here and basically we get the job done really quickly and efficiently. So at the moment we have um, basically, and it has to be really well balanced in between Australians and, 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 and Serbia because you have real, real experience, real knowledge here. So we have about five people here working, including Tanya and I, and basically and, and basically we, we did sort of working from home um, model which we found very good because um, Australians that are working here for us, they really, we were thinking should we make an office or not but we decided uh, basically because everyone, didn't, no one really wanted to travel so basically we set up our businesses in the way that I have like a couple of people, they like, like you know, Aussie way, they, they like, like living close to the beach so I have one person in RV and the other one in Manly and he, they just don't want to go out from there northern suburbs, you know, and they love living there and, and doing that work. So we decided, said, okay, I'm not going to push that, so let's have a, everyone working from home. We set up their, their basically um, uh, offices at home and we, we start working that way. Um, by doing so, basically, we had sort of um, real life experience here and then basically we trained people overseas. So we ended up having five people here and 11 people overseas. Most of them are in Serbia, so we have let's say for people that know Serbia is really five in Belgrade, three in Novi Sad, two in Niš, one in Valjevo and even one girl in Skopje and um, over time we, we developed a program that is also now another little business that is doing uh, automatic design and fabrication and is growing really well inside Australia and basically and we are planning to um, basically expand a little bit further. We are going now with um, playing with the UK and, and, and doing some things there. And we have even a program in Egypt. So, in Egypt. so basically, um, <coughs> that's pretty much what it is. I can see a lot of opportunities there because at the moment we have like about 15 of us. And in engineering business, really, what I, which is what I do, I can see 
massive potential there and I don't think it's it's fully explored from what I know there is just one company and and probably uh, ambassador would know more but on our end really there is just one company that I know that that is from Australia having um, business there in Belgrade apart from what we have which is again it's a it's a it's a small to medium business but I know one company that does that but there is so much opportunities there so basically so many opportunities in general um, I can say on my end, really, I can see there are like 15 of us. I can easily see 30, 40 people uh, doing work just in our, our, our business in fire industry. And, and basically, I can see that in mechanical, hydraulics, and all these things. So it's really not that hard. There are, there are basically, obviously, pros and cons. And basically, obviously, pros are really cost of labor. Yes, it's, it's a bit cheaper there, but then in general you try to make these people have good salaries and, and, and basically the more they are, they, are, they are basically providing to you, you try to, you know, be as, 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 as basically uh, honest that you can in all sort of aspects. Uh, obviously you're doing 24-7 operation and what that means is basically that you are very often able to, ha I have a lot of customers coming at 4 or 5 o'clock at night and saying, oh please I need this for tomorrow, it's urgent and and basically our competition, they just can't do it because five o'clock, see you later. Yeah. But in general, from, from our end, we, we got these things. We basically straight away action that and tomorrow morning we are getting that done and people are just very, very happy with that. So that's one of the things that are really, really great. Obviously, it does work for us because I'm Serbian and Australian and basically I can talk with Serbian. I, I, we just, the culture is cultural fit really works well. You have a lot of highly intelligent people there and basically because there is that imbalance in work opportunities uh, basically in between Serbia and Australia that really means if you really try hard and try to find the right people you can find them there because unfortunately it still is uh, in, from what I what I know basically they still ha don't have a lot of opportunities as we have here in Australia so I managed to have a couple of really really outstanding designers engineers architects that probably would stay in their field but they basically specialize now in fire and then doing that really with the passion and we're doing some really really nice things so that's probably what is what is really nice with that now obviously cons are like time time zone difference so basically i finished at five but then i have a new like at five five fifteen i'm getting oh hey how are you and we are starting again from from serbia and they're obviously fresh while well, i'm not but that's my problem and then we keep going so basically um, that's what it is and also I must say there is a bit of um, you know e even though we are getting better like I'm talking to people from Serbia and English it's still it's still that sort of thing that if, if something is, is basically written by, by Australian people they need you need to check that that's a bit of an issue there but in general um, overall it's really really good experience and um, basically I think everyone is happy we have a lot of people we have been doing that for seven years now no one really left us and, and basically we looked after our people and I see that really a lot, a lot of massive potential there because it's like I said, I'm doing fire design which is just one small aspect of building industry but then like I can easily make that, I can, we can easily have 30 people there at the moment working but we have just 10 and basically there is only so much I can do myself but I can see easily making an office there and have 30 people there if I really want to or if, if there is an interest for that just for fire I'm saying then we have another 30 for MAC, another 30 for hydraulic services, another 30 for electrical. And the whole point is really to get, um, all that you need is to have one person, like to train one or two people to be good at, at, at what they need to do. Then things can spread around and you can grow as long as you need, as much as you need. So this is just our little story, really hope if, if anyone has a, has a basically um, some sort of ideas, we, we can really I can really help with that. We now have this business for seven years working this way and it does work really well. Um, yeah, very, very good quality people there and if you train them well, you're getting that really, you're really getting a lot back from them and uh, yeah, I think there is a massive opportunity. So if anyone has uh, any ideas about what they do and they think they can do something similar, please contact us. We are quite happy to help. Yeah, that's, that's our little story. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, Lewis. Again, he's just such a fantastic example of someone who's built their business out of Australia and has used their cultural ties and links uh, to grow that business and is looking to do that into the future. Uh, speaking of expanding business into Serbia, 
Solar Energy Focus is a company uh, that reached out to us a few weeks ago based in Serbia that has recently patented a new technology. They have sent us a video um, that will explain that technology and the benefits and we would love to show what they're presenting. It, it, it is a fantastic technology but more to show the opportunity as well that it presents for everyone in the room um, in, in terms of the connections and the links we are building uh, between Australia and Serbia. So Stanko Kovacevic is the owner of this company and has um, s developed this video for us, which seems to be working great. So we'll hand over to the presentation for about 10 minutes. Serbia is a country of beautiful countryside, rich in natural resources. This is evidenced by the increasing number of tourists from different parts of the world come to visit us. On the tourist maps, Serbia is marked as a peril in the Balkans. Nevertheless, the situation in the field of environmental protection is not satisfactory. This is due to the infrastructure problems inherited from the previous period aged installations in old industrial facilities, which are not maintained, the social poverty caused by economic sanctions of the United Nations in the 90s of the previous century, as well as the irresponsible attitude of individuals towards the use of natural resources. We want to significantly improve the situation in the field of ecology, especially greater involvement of science and implementation of modern, clean technologies in all spheres of social activity, the economy, energy, public utility affairs, transport, tourism, etc. Here, first of all, think of the development and implementation of innovative solutions for the use of abundant solar energy. Serbia is located in the so-called orange sun belt of radiation, where are the countries of southern East Europe and Mediterranean countries. This gives us the opportunity for intensive use of abundant solar energy in order partial or complete replacement of fossil fuels in the production of electricity and heat. This would dramatically reduce the amount of gas emissions into the atmosphere with greenhouse effects. Our technological solution is based on the patented original device of solar energy concentrator. In relation to the competitive global solutions in the field of solar energy, our technical solution is estimated by the patent office in Brussels as one of the world's best system solution for solar power harvesting. The advantages of our solutions are as follows. The heat receiver and the reflecting mirrors are such that allow a multifaceted receiving of solar heat from all sides of the receiving sphere, thus avoiding the uneven thermal stress at high temperatures in the zone of energy concentration. This solution results in the highest possible efficiency of the system and is unique in the world. In addition, the central pillar of the solar energy concentrator is stationary. The tubes with the heat transfer fluid pass through. In this way, avoid the displacement and twisting of the conductive fluid lines due to the movements caused by a solar tracking system. This eliminates the risk of damaged pipes and excessive leakage fluid into the environment. So, it is a specific design solution that mimics a heliocentric system with planetary motion of the parabolic reflector around a spherical receiver placed in the focus of the parabolic mirror. Thanks to the excellent optical geometry and mechanical construction of a fully automated system, our solar power concentrator is receiving the degree of efficiency of 80%, which brings amongst the most efficient global solutions in the area. 
projects where application of the solar power concentrator with a complementary heat storage have the greatest technical and economical effects are in heat and electricity co-generation, waste water treatment, in process agri-food and pharmaceutical industries, as well as in the spa tourism. Therefore, we invite businessmen and all interested parties in Australia to invest in our scientific and environmental project, to earn money, but also to help our countries to be more beautiful, cleaner and healthier for the future of our children and for all children in the world, because the planet Earth is our common home and we have to keep it. Uh, even though Stanko is not here, I think a round of applause, he did prepare the video in English for the event tonight. <laughs> um, and as you saw, he's working, um, the technology has just been patented and he's working in association with the Mihailo Pupin Institute in Serbia. So if there is any interest or even information to find out more, please do reach out to us directly and we can certainly connect you uh, with Stanko. I would like to now introduce our final speaker for the evening. Now, education has been mentioned a few times almost through, throughout everyone's talks. Um, so, to a much anticipated, I uh, would like to introduce Professor Miroslav Filipovic, uh, who will discuss student exchange. Um, uh, my special uh, uh, thanks goes, you know, to uh, uh, Your Excellency. Thanks very much, you know, for uh, starting, you know, these things uh, a few years ago. Uh, Chris, thanks very, very much, you know, uh, for uh, for uh, uh, doing such a inspirational, you know, a speech. And look, my there is a reason why I vote for you, okay? And uh, I get again, uh, I got a reassurance tonight. Uh, I also would like to pay respect to the traditional owners of the land where we meet tonight. Um, but beyond and above, my most special thanks goes to uh, Stefan Shipka. He's probably my oldest and the best friend that I ever had. Um, 27 years, 7 months and 7 days. Um, and I guess, you know, it's a, it's a quite great achievement. At the moment he's counting my 15 minutes and, and praying, you know, I'm not going to go, you know, with my 35 slides and the crazy equation that I put on a whiteboard there, which, uh, you know, the gentleman called uh, one stone, Einstein, you know, uh, invented, oh, God knows when. Um, or you know, his wife, well, we'll talk about that next time, come to my lectures, you know, I'm, I'm sure it's going to be exciting. But that's not the reason why I'm coming, you know, tonight. Uh, I'm, I'm here, you know, to try, you know, to spark some interest uh, uh, <clears throat> and to sell a story, uh, something very different. Uh, it's 21st century and uh, things are very different than uh, just a few years ago. Hopefully, you know, uh, at the end of uh, tonight's talk, uh, um, you will see why this is all controversial. Uh, if not, maybe tomorrow. Uh, and if you don't see anything controversial, that means, you know, I manage, you know, to hide the main agenda of my tonight's talk, which I think, you know, it's a great thing. So I will go about uh, what is happening now and what's the future, uh, at least the way how I see the future. And I will try not to talk about the past. I'm lying to you, of course. <clears throat> so uh, I guess, you know, you know the two countries and you know uh, that the both countries are growing up on a myth. Uh, the country, without its myth, it's not worth, okay? If you don't have a myth, and we do, both countries, it is essential, you know, for our future. And both of us, Australians and Serbians, we know, you know, what is the sacrifice. Beyond that, we acknowledge our fathers, uh, our fathers, you know, who created our nations. Well, probably, you know, uh, uh, further away, you know, from these two guys, not just these two guys, but more than that. And even further, you know, you recognize, you know, some uh, icons on the both sides. Uh, icons, you know, that uh, define our two great nations and our two great countries, which we are very proud of. Of course, you know, there are some people, you know, from the present and the past, uh, the people, you know, who are very close to me. I'm not quite sure how many of, you know, these guys you recognize. I'm sure the one on the top right corner, everyone will say, you know, that, you are, well, I definitely know. But there are a few other guys. Uh, the guys on the uh, right-hand side are very famous uh, Serbian scientists who really, you know, changed the world. 
uh, on the left hand side are a number of scientists you know who change the the world uh, um, from this uh, end of the world and one of them on the bottom uh, left corner is my you know very good friend and the moment vice chancellor boy he beat me you know from that prize noble i need to beat him next time anyway you know um, his name is brian schmidt it's a great guy of course you know more about icons you know we have our icons you know and i'm sure that you know you know guys you know these two guys uh, very well we do have a, a very interesting history uh, 60,000 years uh, ago you know, it was a you know a huge uh, a movement of a people you know from the uh, what is today known as the South Africa one group went to Australia another one went to Serbia I'm not joking guys they really went to Serbia um, and yes you know we have a, a lot of uh, uh, archaeological heritage you know in the land of Serbia and of course you know ab Aboriginal you know people as well kryptonite you know we've been talking tonight as Stefan mentioned you know the kryptonite in 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 Serbia and uh, and also in Australia on the left hand side this is our gold we are the second uh, largest producer of gold in the world and the one on the right hand side I pronounced it differently Stefan I, I apologize it's called we pro pronounced it Yadrit okay it's the river uh, Yadar uh, which is uh, near Shabbat very close to the Glach, uh, Glach site you know on the other side of the, the Sava, Sava river uh, you've seen you know uh, these beautiful uh, images you know of the of Serbian land uh, we have a lot of beauties you know to show you know on, on the both sides and I'm sure that tourism is the another thing you know we should really uh, think about in the future to develop uh, further and more but uh, tonight I'm to talk uh, I'm here to talk about education uh, specifically education before the university uh, when the kids comes to university uh, I teach at university guys uh, I'm a poor professor you know who uh, talks every single day with these students who are actually you know grown-ups they're 18 year olds you can't change their minds you can teach them but you can you can't change their minds they already have a, a well set up you know a, a reasons why to live and how to live they can change you know a few other things uh, uh, they can learn but not as much as you know one when, when they are younger and specifically tonight i'm gonna very briefly talk about uh, two educational systems one in australia which i guess most of you know very well it's uh, it comes you know uh, kindergarten is uh, you know number one year and i guess you know i can use this uh, thing that's gonna work yes you know so it's the first year of kindergarten have a primary school you know here which is six years we have a high school six years and then we go to uni you know in various you know types three years basic uni honors degree master's degree or whatever in Serbia is very different and it's been there you know since the day one of the creation of the world I think it was uh, before the Big Bang joking no uh, in Serbia it starts you know primary school starts you know at age of seven and uh, it goes for eight years uh, then you go four years in high school and then you go to uni off you go so it's a very simple thing it didn't change the thing you know really it didn't change educational system for a good 50 years while in Australia we're changing that every couple of years okay let's be honest so it's a completely two different systems the way but you know in essence this is the kids with the same age so uh, you will see you know that the Serbians uh, uh, primary and high school education system uh, it's actually you know promotes very different values when it comes down to a teaching so one of the best measures is something called piece of world ranking and right here uh, you will see Australia on a place number 21 which was a huge outcry a couple of years ago how terribly we are doing you know we used to be in top 10 we actually used to be in top 5 uh, and you know things are going you know quite badly and blah, 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 blah. you know uh, all the ministers you know for education is being blamed as they should be of course but you know there is a black hole here and I'm sure that most of you will recognize the black hole it comes here in Serbia when I talk to uh, guys you know why they didn't have any numbers in their last measurements and they didn't have a numbers in the previous measurements why there is no measurements in Serbia how educational system in Serbia works they said well we have a problem why because it's either you know a phenomenally good it's about twice as good as the the top one or these guys cheated so they are absolutely not sure what is happening with the educational system in Serbia I would really like to uh, uh, to think you know we didn't cheat right uh, uh, <laughs> but uh, I think you know there is a something really special about educational system there and I will argue for that and that comes me, uh, comes to uh, my main point tonight to introduce you to something very special something very very unique there is a nothing like this anywhere in the world it's called the Petnica Science Center it's a youth center this is you know for a kids up to a uh, age of uh, 17 18 uh, yes university students comes there but uh, mainly 
And it's not just talented kids, you will see, you know, they're in second, you know, they come there, they spend the whole summer, or, you know, during some holidays, they spend the time there and they learn. They learn very differently than in their schools and anywhere else. So there is a nothing like this anywhere in the world. Uh, I think, you know, that guy, you know, from Russia, what's the name? Uh, Vladimir Vladimirovich tried, you know, to copy that and, you know, after the Sochi Olympic Games, you know, he introduced, you know, I don't know, a huge amount of money, just didn't work there. And you will see why. This is a great spirit. There is a nothing like this, once again, you know, anywhere in the world. So I'll introduce you this uh, a special center, you know, for a, for a, for a kids. It's a non-profit organization, of course, which is a very in, uh, uh, important. It's independent, um, so it's not dependable on the government uh, in any way. It's basically donations. Uh, various types of non-profit do donations are very uh, uh, essential, you know, for them. Um, they are leading institution, you know, for a, for a, uh, uh, this parallel teaching of a, of a young groups of kids in age between 14 and, and, and 19. Where are they? About 100 kilometers uh, 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 west, southwest uh, from Belgrade. It's very easy, you know, to go there. Uh, I think, you know, it, and it's a one hour drive from Belgrade. Relatively simple and easy to go there. Um, it's a near city called Valjevo. Uh, there is a bus connections. There is a, even a train connection. I think it's still a working train. I'm not sure about that, so don't get me you know, if, if I'm wrong there. Uh, and it's selected because uh, there is a, something special in that place. And what's the special? There's archaeological uh, archaeological uh, a finding there. One of the prehistorical, you know, Neanderthals uh, used to live there. And there is a, you know, very interesting, you know, story. What is happening there? Uh, it is a basically, you know, it sounds like a, like a hotel. It's a dormitory there. It's 170 kids, you know, can... Uh, uh, can sleep there. Uh, very nice, beautiful rooms. It's quite nice, you know, easy, you know, uh, to get there, easy, you know, to live there. It's a huge restaurant, beautiful food, of course, you know, I'm sure that that goes without saying. Um, and there is a beautiful library. They have, you will see, you know, a number of other pictures I'm going to show tonight. They have a fantastic labs, state-of-the-art labs, uh, which you won't find in many universities. Well, I'll be honest, not even here. Um, this is the way how we started, you know, some of these pictures you will find me with hair uh, from early, uh, early 80s, you know, this is, you know, the way how we started in 82, 83. Um, oh yes, I was beautiful, I know that, Stephen. Um, but the whole idea is that this place was uh, innovative, uh, it is innovative, you know, it's uh, in, in, a, in a lot of ways, uh, uh, there's a lot of, you know, activities uh, for, a, for a young kids, you know, so they can expand in any directions that they, they, they want. And of course, you know, for, a, for a teachers. Uh, about 2,000 kids each year, you know, attend. There's 120 different courses, uh, and uh, there is a lot of recognition around the world. You know, you won't believe it. UNESCO, I think, you know, uh, 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 awarded them with, a, with some very, very prestigious uh, award relatively recently. What's the what's so uh, innovative there? There are no marks. There are no diplomas. I know, guys. You know that most of us, as a parents. For God's sake, I have a three of them. Uh, you know, we want to be a strict, you know, learn, you know, what's the most important is marks and so on. Kids get tired, you know, about these things. They really want to get, you know, a, a different, you know, uh, opportunities. They want to see something. They, they want to work together, you know, with their own, you know, guys, not to fight for a mark. And this is the list of things, you know, which is a completely different, you know, from a school. So that's the reason why it's, this is a unique place. Um, and uh, it is, uh, to some large, extensive, uh, la large extent, uh, very alternative. It's not going to work for everyone, of course, you know, I admit that. But again, it produces phenomenal results. Look at me, guys. Uh, once again, you know, there's a lot of different skills, you know, that you can, you know, find there. A lot of, you know, different kids. And uh, uh, Stefan is already talking to me, you know, that it's uh, far more than, uh, than, uh, than, uh, than uh, 15 minutes that I have. So I'm going to fly through the next few slides. Um, but, you know, uh, there is a, a lot, you know, to do uh, with, uh, with the kids, with their laboratories, you know, to uh, give them ideas to test, uh, uh, to uh, initiate, you know, cooperation, you know, with the rest of the world. So there is something like, you know, 50 different countries, they send their kids. It's a time now for us to send our, our kids, you know, there. Uh, uh, so far, about 220,000 kids went through that school. Uh, God knows how many different countries, once again. Uh, it's a lot of, you know, support from around the world. Uh, uh, and the 10% of students actually, you know, achieve phenomenal results in their postgraduate studies, which is absolutely, you know, fantastic. These are just some of the fields, you know, that you can find there archaeology, geology, 
physics, of course, astronomy, you know, can't do anything without that, but the business economy, it's a lot of different uh, things that you can, you know, uh, find uh, and as, as a project. Uh, the kids, they, they think differently. This is, you know, uh, what we really want, you know, to teach the next generation of, of kids, critical thinking. And I am personally very proud of that. Uh, the next generation of kids are very different than us. They, they learn, they, they have uh, iPads, you know, they are computerized, they are technology technologically very, very different from us, and this is what the patents are offers, the, offers to them. More facts, you know, you can, you know, read all of them. Uh, uh, 50,000 students, you know, uh, three, three and a half thousand courses, you know, it's, 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 it's absolutely, you know, stunning, you know, when they presented this to a uh, UN a few months ago, I think it was the last year, actually. Okay, I don't know why it stopped. Probably, you know, uh, Stephen limited me to 15 minutes, so I apologize. <laughs> this is the way, you know, how the things, you know, uh, uh, looks in the Petnica. Again, a great fun for the kids, right? Uh, there is a guitar there every night, you know. They actually, you know, war. they talk to each other, right? Uh, yes, there is a Wi-Fi, but after a couple of days, you know, they hate, you know, iPads, because finally they discovered each other. And this is, you know, <laughs> you know something really new, you know, for them. And I really, you know, uh, pay a lot of respect to that. Um, 500 schools in Serbia and the region as well. So I think, you know, every single school teacher in Slovenia and every single kid age 14 needs to go to Petnica. Every single kid from Slovenia needs to go to Petnica, which is, you know, they, you know, we would need more and more capacity there to, you know, uh, find the... Uh, uh, to facilitate, you know, more kids there. So yes, you know, there is a, you know, a lot of uh, equipment there. I don't want to go to uh, anything that is, uh, you know, special needs, you know, for the uh, kids for uh, 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 science camps. You know, it's uh, different areas, as I said, economy and arts. Um, and I think it's about time for us to think about this. And I hope, Your Excellency, that you can help us, you know, to establish this uh, these links uh, in a, in a both ways. As you can see in this picture. I was really stunned to see, you know, how many kids from different countries, even from that strange country called South Korea, you know, uh, show up, you know, a couple of kids, you know, there, and we couldn't communicate with them, but that's a different problem. So the kids all around the world, they're coming. What's the proposal? What do I propose? I think it's about time that we invest in that beautiful equation that I put there, invest us, our mass, my 102.7 kilos, don't tell that to my wife, which is sitting here at the back, you know, I'm not that heavy, Invest us to accelerate the things and we'll get the best force in the world. That's our kids. Let's invest in our kids. Let's do something, you know, for them. So I'd really like to propose that uh, this beautiful organization, Australian Serbian Commerce of the Chamber, you know, endorse uh, our possible exchange of the students, you know, from both ends, our kids, Australian kids, you know, to go there and their kids, you know, to come here. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks very much once again. Please support that project. It was a great pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you once again, Miroslav. A great presentation. Uh, I'd like to move um, on to just the final part of our evening. Before we get to closing remarks, any questions, um, and, and not just questions to us as a chamber, but is there any questions to any of the speakers that presented tonight that any of you may have? No, Stevan? Um, in that case, I'd like to extend thanks to Stevan Shivka, who played a large part in putting tonight together as well, and. Um, in co coordinating everything. I'd like to once again thank our sponsors, uh, Automotive Risk, Sales Tracker, Fusion Professionals and Exhaust. And thank you uh, most of all for attending and joining us tonight. It, it is this community and who attends in this room um, that really will drive what we're doing moving forward um, through promotion and awareness. Many of you reached out to me even directly in the process of organisations um, with even ideas, connections and invited people um, on behalf of the Chamber and even little actions like that um, really do help what we're all trying to collectively achieve. Um, as our speakers, as Ambassador Petrovic, Chris Hayes um, and the other speakers mentioned, if if anyone in the room does have ideas or based off the event tonight would like to reach out or even simply connect, 
highly encourage you to do so. Um, we, we've got our social media pages on LinkedIn, Facebook and our website, um, but we would love to do events like this more often and we would love your feedback um, and absolutely any ideas you have. So once again, on behalf of the Australian Serbian Commerce Chamber, thank you very much for your attendance tonight and hope to see you soon.